lecture of CA IPCC paper 4 taxation part 1 income tax and today we will learn basics of taxation. In our daily life we all know what is tax. We see various taxes all around us. Basically taxes are a medium by which government collects its revenue. Taxes are given different names according to the basis. Say, sale tax is so named because it is charged on sales made by anyone. It is important to understand that taxes are not in nature of final penalty, rather a way to collect revenue by the government which is ultimately used for the benefit of public only. So basis of tax are fixed in such a way that the person paying these doesn't find hardship. Taxes are basically categorized according to their nature into two parts. These are direct taxes and indirect taxes. Direct taxes are those taxes which are collected from the person who ultimately bears these. While indirect taxes are collected indirectly from the person bearing these through someone else. Means person pays the taxes to government and then passes its burden to someone else who ultimately bears it. It will be easy to understand these two taxes with some examples. Income tax is a direct tax because it is directly paid to the government by the person who bears it. But sale tax is an indirect tax person who bears the tax pays this to someone else. The seller charges the price of the item along with tax from the person who bears the tax, from the purchaser. And then the seller keeps the price of the item with himself and the amount of tax collected with the item is what he passes on to the government. So direct taxes basically are two direct taxes we have, income tax and wealth tax. Indirect taxes, main indirect taxes in our country are sales tax, excise duty which is on production of goods, customs duty which is on import of goods and service tax which is charged on services. Income tax a direct tax is charged on income, wealth tax a direct tax because it's charged on wealth. Indirect taxes are sale tax charged on sale of goods, excise duty on production of goods custom duty on import of goods and service taxes on services. So our field of study in this subject is income tax which is a direct tax. Income tax is a law in itself and it's comprised of various parts. These are income tax acts, income tax rules, surplus and notifications, legal decisions of courts and also annual finance act which bring changes to income tax act and ultimately become part of income tax act. So at one point of time one needs to study these parts acts, rules, circulars and notification and court decisions. Now let's understand each one of these one by one. Income Tax Act. This is the main legislature governing income tax law in India. Other three parts supporting acts in procedural and explanatory manner. Income Tax Act 1961 came into effect from 1st April 1961. The act comprises of 298 sections and 14 schedules. Each year, annual finance act which comes as a part of budget makes changes to the income tax act and ultimately these changes become part of income tax act itself. Sometimes government brings amendments bills to make media changes to income tax act. For proper administration of income tax act, it gives powers to CBDT that is central board of direct taxes to frame rules. These rules 
chapter called Income Tax Rules 1962. Rules comprise procedural part of income tax law and are below income tax act. From time to time, CBDT issues various directions to deal with specific problems or to clarify doubts on some provision. These are in form of circulars and notifications. Circulars are binding on department but not on the taxpayer. Taxpayers can take advantage of circulars if these are beneficial to them. Whenever there are doubts about law and there is any litigation, matter goes to court between taxpayer and department. Whenever courts decide case in particular manner, it becomes part of law and is binding on other cases also. The decision of Supreme Court is law of land and is binding on everyone. Decision of high courts are applicable to respective state. As we know, in the current subject, we are going to study income tax law in India. Income tax is levied on income of a person. So, for understanding this law, first we need to understand what is income, which is taxed, how this income is determined, and then we will understand how tax is calculated on this income. First of all, let's understand how income is determined under this act. To determine income, we need to follow certain steps in particular sequence. These steps are determine residential status, classification of income under five heads, compute the income under respective heads according to methods prescribed under these heads and while calculating these exclude the incomes exempt. Aggregate the incomes calculated under five heads Apply the provisions of clubbing of income of other person. Set off any losses of current year or loss of previous year properly carried forward. And carry forward any loss of current year not able to set off to next year. Now what we get is called gross total income. Apply the deductions from income described under chapter 6a. The remainder is taxable income which shall be subject to tax. Now let's understand these steps in detail one by one. As you know, every country has its own jurisdiction where its laws are applicable. This is also true for taxing laws. To determine which incomes are taxable in India and which persons are taxable in India, some basis has to be there. Income tax is governed by residential status. It means tax liability of those resident in India is more than those who are not. Residential status is determined by stay of a person in India. A person based on his stay in India can be ordinary resident in India, not ordinary resident in India, and non resident in India. Tax liability of all three types of person is different in Indian tax law. So to determine taxable income of a person, first of all we have to determine what is his residential status in India. Once we know the residential status of a person, we know which are the taxable incomes of that person in India. Next step is to classify this income into five heads of income. Classification is based on nature of each income. These are five heads of income. Salaries, pension and other receipts from employers are taxable under the head salaries. Rental income from letting of house property is taxable under the head income from house property. Incomes derived from carrying on any business or profession is taxable under the head profits and gains of business of profession. Income from sale of any capital asset is taxable under the head capital gain. Any income which is not taxable under any of the above heads goes to residuary head which is called income from other sources. It is mandatory and not optional to classify income into any of these heads. 
as every head has different method of calculating taxable income, different deductions and different allowances. As you know, the method of calculation of income is different under different heads. After classifying the income under different heads, the next step is to calculate the taxable income under the respective heads based on the methods prescribed for each head. Each head has different exemptions, allowances and deductions for calculating the incomes. These should be applied and allowed while calculating these incomes. Further, there are some specific exemptions allowed under Section 10. These should be given while calculating taxable income under these heads. Once the income is calculated under these different heads, these incomes are aggregated because tax rates are applied on total income. After we apply after it, we apply clubbing provisions. Tax in India is progressive. That means tax rates change with the change in income level. There is basic exemption and then lower tax rate, then higher tax rate for higher incomes. Because of this, some taxpayers may divert part of their income to other family members in order to get double benefit of lower tax rates for lower income. In order to prevent such practices, there are clubbing provisions in income taxes. As per clubbing provisions, if any person diverts whole of whole or part of his income to someone else, that income is still taxable in hands of person diverting income. So before calculating tax, clubbing provisions are applied and clubbed income are also added to that person. step is to apply set off and carry forward of income. Although we calculate income under various heads, there can also be loss in particular heads. Income tax law also allows to set off certain losses with income of other heads or carry forward to be set off from income of next year. Once we apply all these provisions, we reach the gross Next step is to deduct the deduction. Income tax law allows certain deductions from the gross total income. These deductions are based on different criteria. Deductions in respect of certain payments and investments. Deduction in respect of certain incomes or other deduction. After deducting deductions, we get total, total taxable income. Once we have calculated taxable income, we need to calculate the tax on this income. There are several steps involved in this. First of all, we need to apply tax rates on this. There are different tax rates for different types of taxpayers. Although agriculture income is exempt, but we need, we need to add agriculture income for rate purposes. After we apply tax rates to income, we apply the applicable surcharge and education charge. Next step is to grant relief from tax. There are certain reliefs provided in the income tax law to avoid undue hardship to the taxpayer. After it, we get net tax payable by taxpayer. Certain provisions of income tax act require taxpayer to deposit tax during the year itself. This is called advanced tax. Certain other provisions require person making payment to taxpayer to deduct some amount of tax from the payment. This is called tax deducted at source or TDS. While paying the taxpayer gets a credit of these amounts means his income tax liability is reduced by these amounts. So in this step we deduct TDS and advance tax from the next net tax liability. Next step is to apply interest on tax. Last step is to deposit the balance tax amount before filing of the return. This is called self-assessment tax. After depositing this, return of income can be filed. This was end of lecture 1. 
बेसिस ऑफ टैक्सेशन ये शिक्षा एक्सप्लोरिंग न्यू हाइट्स ऑफ